It's a moment that stretches beyond policy, beyond party, and into the deepest layers of who we are and what we stand for. Tomorrow, the American people face a stark, almost chilling choice that echoes through the chambers of our collective history and the hearts of those who seek a better tomorrow. It's not simply a decision between two candidates. It's a reflection of the values we choose to uphold or to abandon. On one side stands a man with a legacy marred by criminal charges, 34 of them, each representing a thread in a tapestry woven with entitlement, divisiveness, and disdain for the very institutions meant to protect and uplift the people. Here is a man who, in the shadow of history, incited an insurrection, a day etched in shame, a day when lives were lost and the seat of American democracy trembled. He is a man who has used his status to objectify and great women who unbashedly voiced his belief in his right to take whatever he wanted, grab them by the irrespective of consent, boundaries, or decency. He embodies a dark, underlying stain of racism and supremacy ideology, a force that seeps through society and festers, poisoning unity and stripping dignity from those who seek to contribute their best to a nation that prides itself on diversity and resilience. And then there is a woman, a woman who by stepping up to this monumental challenge, confronts not only the weight of her opponent, but the weight of every stereotype every dismissal, every moment she was told she couldn't or shouldn't or wouldn't. She stands as more than a candidate. She stands as a beacon for every woman who's been underestimated, every minority told to step back, go back, and every American who believes in a future untamed by this greed of violence and hate. There are those that say that they're voting for their Christian values. Hmm. It's not about your Christian values. You already start by lying. It's about power cloaked in piety, an excuse to uphold a system that strives on division, fear, and control. What's disguised as Christian values has twisted so far from the teachings of compassion, humility, and love for the least among us. Jesus never thought cruelty nor did he weaponize fate to subjugate others. Yet here, in the name of Christianity, people defend the indefensible, given their allegiance to a man who embodies none of the virtues they claim to hold so dear. False prophets, lay hands on this man. 
casting him as a savior while he tears at the fabric of democracy, compassion, and decency. They pray over him, not out of genuine faith, but out of an allegiance to something darker, to power, dominance, subjugation, privilege, prejudice. Religion in this context has been corrupted, perverted into a tool for greed and hate, a mockery of the very fate it claims to uphold. And let's be honest, those who say they are voting their Christian values aren't guided by love, mercy, or justice. No, they're afraid to say that they truly, truly feel. And what they truly feel is that they should be in control. They want to control women have control over their bodies. They're voting for dominance, for the right to dictate who belongs and who doesn't. The truth is, this isn't a choice between two imperfect candidates. This is a choice between a man who has openly flaunted every principle of decency and accountability a man who has openly mocked fate, humanity, and responsibility. And a woman who has endured scorn and scrutiny without compromising her integrity. Yet, she's dismissed. Not because she lacks policy or direction, but because she doesn't fit a narrow vision of power and entitlement. So tomorrow's vote isn't about fate. It's not about policy or about values or any other convenient excuse. It's about whether you are willing to look ourselves in the mirror and face the truth that by upholding a man who embodies hate and greed, we're willing to trade the soul of a nation for the false promise of control. And let's be clear, the choice isn't between flawed leaders. It's because a man who incited an insurrection, who put millions of lives at risk, who boasts of assault and has been convicted. And about a woman, a woman who offers a path forward however imperfect, yet rooted in dignity and in service. So tomorrow's vote isn't about faith. It's not about policy or about values or any other convenient excuse. It's about whether we're willing to look ourselves in the mirror and face the truth that by upholding a man who embodies hate and greed, we're willing to trade the soul of a nation for the false promise of control. And let's be clear, the choice isn't between flawed leaders. It's between a man who incited an insurrection, 
who put thousands of lives at risk, hundreds of thousands, who boast of assault and has been convicted. And a woman, a woman who offers a path forward, however imperfect, yet rooted in dignity and in service. So tomorrow, let's strip away the pretense. This vote isn't about faith or family values. It's a choice between courage and cowardice. It's about whether we stand for integrity or yield to the hollow facade. For those hiding behind excuses, afraid to admit their motives, understand this. Voting for someone who strives on hate, deceit, and cruelty doesn't protect your values your Christian values. It betrays them. If you choose to support a man who flaunts criminality, who mocks both decency and democracy, then own it. Own it. Say plainly, you want control. You want this divisiveness. You choose fear over hope. But let's not pretend it's anything more than that. You're not preserving a way of life. You're surrendering to a smallness that demeans us all. For the rest of us, for those who still believe in a country guided by truth, dignity, and the power of unity, let this be a stand. Not for, not for per perfection, but for possibility, not for empty promises, but for a vision where compassion isn't a weakness and justice isn't negotiated. Choose the future that aligns with the best in us, not the worst. For tomorrow and every day that follows, let's choose to be better than our fears and bolder than our doubts. Because that, in the end, is what real faith requires. <laughs>